Today we're bringing you a preview of Castle Panic Deluxe, designed by Justin DeWitt and brought to us by Fireside Games. I'm Mark Maya, and this is Board Game Coffee. Before we get started, you should know that all the components seen in this video are of the prototype variety and don't necessarily represent the final look of the game. With that said, let's get back to our preview. Castle Panic Deluxe is a 1-6 to six player cooperative game where players work together to defend their castle from the relentless onslaught of castle-hating monsters pouring out of the surrounding forest, and based on the true story of the worst real estate deal in history. Ooh, I like all the trees. It's just so woodsy. Oh yeah, woodsy. The ideal location for your future castle. There's just so much space. Perfect for backyard barbecues. Right? Sign here and it's all yours. What was that? Just um, neighborhood kids, it was nothing. If I could just get your initials right. Excellent. You are now the proud owner of some prime pine woodside property. Oh, we look at the time. I've got another property to show over at uh, Burgundy. So but I gotta go. Uh, congratulations. Lock your doors. In Castle Panic, players use cards to slay monsters and build walls in an effort to protect the six towers of their castle. If all those towers are destroyed, you lose. And the only way to win is to kill all the monsters in the game. Like, all of them. Which is not as easy as it sounds and can stir up quite a panic. You just got that, didn't you? God, you're stupid. When the original Castle Panic released, way back in days of old, like 2009, it looked like this. Cardboard walls, towers, and bits. But we're in the future, baby, and the future is now. I, I didn't s sound right. Can we, uh, can, we do, can we do that again? Nope. In Castle Panic Deluxe, Fireside Games has done away with their cardboard bits and replaced them with wooden bits. And look at these guys. Cool, right? And this isn't even all of it. I mean, this, this is all we were sent. I, I don't take it personally, although I, I'm hurt. Minis act as stand-ins for these tokens. So when you pull one of these out of the bag, instead of placing it on the board like you would in the original, discard it and use the mini in its place. Well, because a bag full of minis just, they, they just wouldn't work. There's more minis than just monsters. We got walls, towers, wizard's towers, catapults. There's, there's lots, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things. Granted, this is the core box and expansions, but still awesome. And uh, not a review, but I'm loving this because little furniture is, is the best. Not, not technically furniture, but you, you, you get what I'm saying. Now, I don't usually spend a lot of time on minis when it comes to previews. I mean, you've seen one mini, you've seen them all, right? Wrong. <laughs> Check this out. In the original Castle Panic, which I don't have here, but in that version, when a monster took damage, you would spin a little cardboard guitar pick so that its current health would point toward the castle. Cool little idea, and, and it worked just fine. But now, so much better. Let me show you. This time around we're dealing with minis, and when a monster mini takes damage, their bases spin to indicate how much damage they've taken. How cool is that? I think I spent more time playing with the little spinny bases than I did the rule book. I'm shocked. In <laughs> fact, what I meant to say, smartass, was that the game is so simple to learn that reading the rule book took no time at all. And that you're entertained by little spinny things. Come on! Have you tried this? It's very compelling. The core of the game revolves around 
playing cards to deal damage to creatures that are standing in the space that match the card you just played. Green archers damage a monster in the green archer space. That sort of thing. There's also special cards that do things like tar monsters, draw more cards, fortify walls, and other stuff. You'll also have a fair share of pitfalls to contend with, like um, plagues that can absolutely decimate your hand, boulders that destroy everything that gets in their way, and boss monsters that aren't only hard to kill, but trigger effects like draw more monster tokens, move monsters, heal monsters. It's all bad <laughs> for you. Good for them. Throughout the game, monsters are moving in on your castle, and when a monster runs into your castle, they start tearing shit down. If it's a wall, no big deal. I mean, it's not great, but you can rebuild a wall by playing a brick and a mortar card. But towers, that's another story altogether. You can't rebuild towers. Well, not in the, not in the base game, but there is a way to fix towers in the wizard expansion, but we'll get to that a little later. Actually, you know what? Let's, let's just jump to that now. The core rules of Castle Panic are the basis that all the expansions are built on, but each expansion brings with it something new that really changes up the way you play. In the Wizard's Tower, one of your basic towers is replaced with the cool Wizard's Tower that gives you access to this Wizard's Deck that's absolutely loaded with all kinds of super-powered spells that you will absolutely need to contend with the next level of hurt that this expansion will throw your way. Like these new flying monsters that can't be hit by knights or swordsmen. Or this fire-breathing chimera that can set your castle on fire. Yep, you heard me right. Fire, because things burn now. <laughs> That's not good. There's also hydras and dragons and other terrible things. Oh, and the, and the boulders? Did I mention that uh, these are on fire now too? <laughs> There's just... So much danger in this one expansion, it hardly seems fair. So make sure you protect that wizard's tower because once it's gone, no more new spells. And trust me, you're, you're gonna need them. Over here, we have the Dark Titan expansion, which introduces this badass into the fray. Just, just look at him and his eight points of health. This guy isn't just big, he's also got all these crazy superpowers, depending on what level you decide to play. If you play at level five, he can heal himself. And at six, he can actually throw giant boulders. Not cool. He's also got an entourage of nasty baddies that you're gonna have to deal with. For example, if this boom troll reaches your tower, it'll destroy all tower bits in that wedge. Fortifications, walls, towers, all of it. <laughs> what a dick. He also got the dark sorceress that permanently reduces your hand size as long as she's on the board and a bag full of other jerks determined to ruin your day. But lucky for us, we also got some heroes to add to the fray. Like the Cavalier who patrols your castle like a nightclub bouncer, kicking ass wherever there be ass that needs kicking. And other characters that award you some sweet bonuses if you can get them safely from the forest to the castle. Things like draw more cards, repair walls, or straight up deal damage to any monster anywhere on the board. And last but not least, we got Engines of War. This expansion expands on the idea of using resources for more than just building walls. Now you can set up traps and barricades to slow down your enemy, or assemble catapults and ballistas to simply annihilate them. But it wouldn't be Castle Panic if it only got easier for the humans down, would it? Oh no. You see, now that you have these, the enemy gets these. Siege engines not only make it easier for monsters to reach and destroy your castle, but they also protect the monsters operating them. As if things aren't hard enough. Monsters also have structures now, like the barracks that serve as an inconvenient meeting point that'll whittle down your castle from the one side. And a forward camp structure that spawns monsters even closer, so gives you even less time to react. It's all just terrible. Not the game, um, the, uh, the situation. <laughs> You're probably gonna die. But on a positive note, you can mix and match these expansions however your little heart desires. You want to combine powerful magic spells with engines of destruction in order to take out the Dark Titan? You can do that. Hell, mix and match expansions however the hell you want. Because in the end, it's all about how you want to play. 
And that's it for Castle Panic, a simple game that anyone can play with a collection of expansions to spice up your experience. Now, before we go, you should know that Castle Panic Deluxe will not be going to retail, so if you want to get your hands on a copy, Kickstarter's probably your best bet. But after that, you can always order it directly from Fireside Games. We'll add the link to both those options in the description below. Anyways, that's it for our preview of Castle Panic Deluxe. If this sounds like a game you'd be interested in, check them out on Kickstarter. Thanks for joining us. If you like this video and you want to see more, subscribe to our channel. It's the best way to keep up to date with everything we do here at Board Game Coffee. But if you want to see more right now, we got plenty of videos to choose from. And if that's not enough, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I'm Mark Maya, and this is Board Game Coffee. And remember, have fun, keep gaming, be social. See you next week.